Hi, Cindy. So, good morning, London. Good morning, Basri. Great to see you. So, as you know, this year's World Circular Textiles Day is focused on circularity perceptions from around the world. And before we dive into challenges and circularity opportunities in Indonesia, we'd like to start by getting your response to some of the legacy perceptions around Indonesia and viscose pr production, particularly in relation to deforestation, land disputes, and drainage of peatlands. So in your view, what what is being done to overcome these associations? And do you think it's enough? First of all, Cindy, uh, thank you very much again for the questions. And second, this uh, Rantai Textile Estari has nothing to do to answer that those perception, because those perception, those accusation is actually uh, depends on every single company that should answer it, right? But then from my end, from my perspective, uh, I think those accusations, especially the baseless accusations, perception, should be clarified based on uh, transparency. See, and then for example, if somebody uh, talk about land disputes, talking about deforestation, show us the map, bring it to the government because any businesses here is actually also ruled by permits, right? Uh, so bring to the government and discuss it together. Because otherwise, uh, this kind of perceptions will be never ending. And then secondly, any parties pointing fingers about the three items you mentioned, please go to the field, check it, and then talk to them, and then give some uh, uh, inputs and insights to the businesses. Because Indonesia is also like many other countries, it's actually regulated by laws, regulations, uh, permits, and so on. What's your um, advice to the different uh, stakeholders and producers who want to turn this reputation around? Uh, I think first, it's make a commitment publicly or into your community and then execute it or deliver it and then annually monitor and then get insights. And trust me, any, business, any businesses understand what they should do because they have their own buyers overseas and buyers have some requirements as well. So I think they understand on how to meet the requirements. But if they are baseless perception, then how could we prove it? So I think businesses fully understand what they should do and then for uh, their reputation as well, because if their reputation turns worse and worse, then it means that there will be no business for them, right? So my best advice is actually make a commitment, whether or not you are publicly listed companies. So you make a public, uh, uh, make a commitment and then deliver it uh, executed and then annually or regularly monitor and then get inputs to a continuous improvement. Businesses uh, in Indonesia, especially the textile manufacturers, fashion designers, are on their way to make a lot of innovations, a lot of uh, activities on how to survive in this industry, especially when people talk, when the customers talk about a sustainable fashion and circular fashion. Indonesia is a huge market. And then if you talk about the raw materials for the circular textile, you already have it here. But we all keep learning, right? If you want to help uh, uh, the businesses here, you see them, engage with them, and then listen to them. So we were lucky enough to experience just a snapshot of the energy and the interest from Indonesian stakeholders 
while we were doing our on our expedition there in May of this year. What what progress do you feel? It's only been a couple of months, but yeah. what progress in your conversations uh, have happened around, say, industry collaborations or developing a roadmap or government um, being engaged and, and interested in moving things forward? Let me talk about uh, RTL first. The Rantai Textile Estari is just about two years old. And then our meeting is about three months, four months ago. But then, of course, there are not much uh, progress. But first, uh, this is good news. The, the first ever bill or legislation for the textile is going to be discussed and hopefully being uh, approved in the House of Representatives in the Parliament of Indonesia next year. It's already stated in their plan for 2024. So that's number one. And number two, uh, we have some discussion actually, and then based on our conversation, based on our discussion, and also uh, a series of discussion after that, I myself learned there are a number of uh, practices and a number of stories that designers all across the country is actually have been doing some progressive ways uh, onto the uh, their business talking about uh, sustainable fashion and circular fashion. Small, you know, but at Indonesian scale, it's small. I think, but that is a good start. People understand that business uh, as usual is no longer there. It should be something talking about uh, measure, measuring your impact to environment and then to the to the climate change and so on. So people are aware. Hopefully, customers also understand. Despite you know, despite all the massive flooding of the cheap imported materials from overseas to Indonesia. Can you share any detail about what's involved in the bill? Oh yeah. So I think number one, it should be. Uh, a crystal clear bill on the textile because Indonesia has already low uh, has already had the law on uh, food, for example. We they have a lot. Uh, they have already a law on uh, uh, properties, for example. We they already, but this law on uh, textile has been discussed for maybe I think back in 2017, five years ago. It's already been discussed also. So hopefully this time things gonna to happen. So the we are actually proposing number one, this bill, once it's legalized next year, is going to talk about where Indonesia textile should go to. When they talk about sustainable textile, what regulation, what infrastructure is needed, and then Number three, when they talk about circularity, it's the same. When they're talking about the modest fashion, they need some map also. What do we have? What, we, what are the challenges? Where are the markets and so on? But on top of that, there should be one body uh, that can be directly reported to the number one here, to the president, for example. So this key industry can be, can grow, uh, uh, in the uh, in the path that we want to, to see. So this actually, this bill is very, very crucial. So whoever become uh, the, the, the ministers, become the new investors, should look at this law and then they know how to invest, where to invest, and then to look uh, the likelihood of the uh, industry, we can, we, can, we can talk and then we can progress on this, uh, on this uh, law later on. Because this bill, it will be a big roadmap for Indonesia on how not only to win the, uh, the international market, but also the domestic market. Because it's huge, you know, almost all international brands are here in Indonesia trying to take the benefits of the market. Do you, do you feel that uh, this is going to be welcomed by producers? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because 
lot of producers really see this sustainability in the business they should go uh, hand on hand uh, but then they have nothing uh, they have they haven't seen anything uh, uh, on papers about this because if you talk about this moment take a look on on what indonesia already have when you talk about for example infrastructure you see the logistics and so on if you put only the collecting bins to collect uh, used uh, clothes from others and then uh, in, in a country like indonesia where the humidity is very high it costs you a lot in terms of storage in terms of logistics in terms of process so i think with that kind of bill and then a crystal clear roadmap everyone will understand uh, this is new business oh this is a good business because otherwise uh, they will stuck into the existing business i'm yeah. switching direction here would love to get your uh, thoughts on what motivated you to get involved in world circular textiles day this year uh, good question because first of all we at rtl is actually looking at the customer behavior in indonesia right because if you go if you make any quick survey in many developing countries and countries like indonesia when they talk about fashion it's about at least two things it's trendy it's cheap that's it <laughs> you know but then when industry like us uh try also to promote what is good for the the, the 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 climate good for the customers and then they will learn slowly about yeah when i buy something i should also think my contributions to the planet because the planet belongs to them right? it belongs to everyone later on so everyone should be responsible not only the, the industry because we businesses are not the climate police right and then business cannot do it alone we need government we need the customers so that's why we actually uh, try to take part in the world circular textile day especially starting this year hopefully that can amplify what happens in europe in the perspective of the customers in the perspective of uh, uh, academicians and also it can amplify also to the to the customer here to the academicians to the government and us the industry indonesians textile manufacturers clothing manufacturers are actually uh, try very hard in learning about the real business of sustainable textile and clothing the real business about circularity in this business few of us believe that ah, this is maybe five ten years or maybe 15 20 years more than we need this kind of businesses but one once they look now what happens in the automotive industry they are talking already electric vehicle which they never talked some five ten years ago right now they are talking about coal versus the solar panel the wind the water, the, the air, and so on. So actually, with people here, you keep learning. But then if you look at the international market, the pressure for, from the international brands, which getting from the customers, then I think we already understand. But if you look at the fashion designers, the millennials, they're already ahead. See, but the price uh people perceived are still very high see so i think that's that's a, an opportunity for businesses to do something else you know to meet uh the needs from the customers thank you very much basri for the conversation and for the updates